بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اور فورت لیکچر ان ریسپیکٹ ٹو ٹرانسلیشن از ڈفرنٹ اسٹیپس انوالو ان پروٹین سنسس بوتھ ان پرو کیریئرس ایز ویل ایز ان یو کیریئرس پروٹین از آلوس آلویز سنتھسائز فرام امینو ٹرمینل ٹو اٹس کاربوکسلک ٹرمینل بٹ دی میسنجر آر این اے اٹ از آلویز ریڈ فرام فائیو پرائم ٹو تھری پرائم اینڈ so the directional reading of messenger rna for, from 5 prime to 3 prime it will uh, uh, produce or form the um, polypeptide chain from amino terminal to the carboxylic terminal the messenger rna in prokaryotes it is always a uh, polycystronic or in most of the case it is polycystronic as uh, operon as uh, operon present in uh, prokaryotes and these operon it give the um, coding region more than one coding region in the messenger rna but in case of eukaryotes this messenger rna it is um, uh, contain the single coding region and it is monocystronic along with in uh, prokaryotes as uh, messenger rna is formed it uh, undergoes the translational process while in eukaryotes this messenger rna first post uh, transcription modification take place then it goes towards the cytosol from where it uh, 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 from where the translational process occurs so first of all the uh, this messenger rna it must be mature functional before undergoing the translational process um, but it uh, in case of prokaryotes it is opposite Uh, the messenger rna is functional whenever it is in nascent form and it undergoes the translation process there are three phases that is the initiation elongation and termination both in prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes these translational process as in transcriptional these different phases in translational process as in transcriptional process first of all is the initiation initiation it uh, demands or uh, it uh, depends upon the assembly of different components and these uh, different translational components uh, to form a mature uh, initiation complex before uh, the incoming amino acid uh, that has been incorporated into the uh, growing polypeptide chain so uh, Uh, translational system it involves the assembly of the components uh, uh, take place and these components they include the two ribosomal subunits one is the mature messenger rna uh, which uh, uh, provide the template for the growing polypeptide chain along with the amino acyl trna the and there are also in the translation process energy is required in the form of gtp or atp and along with the different initiation factors these initiation factors both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes they are they assist the translational process there are two mechanism by which how the messenger rna it is aligned on uh, uh, ribosomes in such a way that it can read the initiation codon the start codon or aug the true alignment of this messenger rna with the ribosome in prokaryotes has been done by the shine dial garno sequence this shine dial garno sequence it is present at the 5 prime end of the messenger rna right about the 6 to 10 nucleotides upstream from the initi uh, initiating codon or the start codon it is present at the 5 prime end and this is uh, recognized by the complementary and anti parallel Uh, nucleotide sequence which is present at the 16s ribosomal rna of the uh, smaller unit in case of 
prokaryotes. In case of prokaryotes, the 30S ribosomal subunit contains the 16S ribosomal RNA. This ribosomal RNA contains the antiparallel as well as the complementary nucleotide sequence at its 3' prime end, while this sequence present at the 5' prime end of the messenger RNA, which is upstream of from the start codon. This shine diagonal sequence this aided or assist or give the true alignment of messenger RNA on the ribosome so as to continue the translational process. While in case of initiation, uh, formation of the initiation complex in eukaryotes, there are two mechanisms. One is the cap-dependent mechanism and other one is the cap-independent mechanism. In cap-dependent mechanism, different uh, eukaryotic initiation factors, they are attached uh, and uh, they form the initiation. First of all, the pre-initiation complex and then the initiation complex. The attachment of the uh, first of all there is the dissociation of the two subunits in case of eukaryotes that is the 40s and the 60s units then the formation of the ternary complex which include the uh, initiator initiator methionyl trna gtp and eukaryotic initiation factor 2 with the 40S ribosomes and it formed the 43S pre-initiation complex. So the second need is the formation of 43S pre-initiation complex. Then they bind with the messenger RNA and messenger RNA is uh, uh, first of all it, it is previously activated through different uh, um, uh, eukaryotic initiation factors uh, basically the initi eukaryotic initiation factor 4 uh, F family now this uh, then again it will bind the 60s ribosomal subunit to form the 80s mature initiation complex so all of these four steps they are involved for the formation of 80s initiation complex this one is the mechanism by which how the first of all the this messenger rna it is being activated the cap of the messenger rna is activated by the eukaryotic initiation factor 4 f family which include the 4G and 4A along with the 4E proteins and then there is a poly A tail binding protein at the poly A tail then these functional messenger RNA bind with the pre-initiation complex here this one is the pre-initiation complex uh, this one is the pre-initiation complex then bind with the activated messenger RNA this pre-initiation complex it is formed by the different factors, different uh, uh, initiation, eukaryotic initiation factors like uh, 1A, 1, 3 and 5 to form the pre-initiation complex. Now, this pre-initiation complex after binding with the activating messenger RNA, it then form the mature initiation complex along with the tRNA which is methionyl tRNA it is the initiator tRNA and this initiator tRNA after binding with this pre-initiation complex and the ATS subunit of the ribosome it formed the mature uh, initiation complex. So all of these steps involved for the formation of initiation complex in case of eukaryotes and here the initi initiator uh, um, tRNA first undergoes to the P site in both prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. However, this P site it is uh, then after then this P site is involved for the tRNA containing the peptide chain but firstly at the initial phase at the uh, start of the uh, uh, at the start of the elongation phase the first of all this tRNA it will bind at the P site 
the circular uh, the circular uh, maturation of the messenger rna it is needed for the uh, translation process in eukaryote this is the circular circularization of the uh, messenger rna this circular messenger rna have been added by different factors as eukaryotic initiation factor 4e which are the cap binding factors 4g 4a and f3 these are different initiation factors eukaryotic initiation factors which bind to the cap along with there is association with polyurethane binding proteins which bind at the polyurethane and all these associations they form the initiation complex pre initiation complex in case of eukaryotes and this pre initiation complex then uh, mm, uh, uh, bind with the 40s ribosomal subunit and along with the eukaryotic initiation factor 2 uh, gtp uh, and uh, along with the mm, methionyl uh, trna to, to form the mature 43 s complex and after this this um, complex then bind with the uh, 60s ribosomal subunits it will form the mature initiation complex for the translation now this complex is ready for elongation to enter into the elongation phase methionine at the three prime side with the ester linkage this one is the ester linkage the hydroxyl group of cca a and any residues it is um, it form the ester linkage of the carboxylate terminal of the methionine so an ester linkage is formed in case of uh, prokaryotes an enzyme transform myelase it convert this uh, methionine to form the n formyl methionine here the n amino uh, uh, end of this uh, methionine it is formylated and this has been done by the enzyme which is known as the transformylase and the n10 formyl tetrahydrofolate it is used for the uh, formyl group donor this formulation occur in eukaryotic uh, mitochondria as well as in prokaryotic initiator trna now this initiator trna both in case of prokaryotes and also in case of eukaryotes it is ready to give its methionine uh, and enter into the elongation phase now this one is the initiation phase in case of eukaryotes eukaryotes the different initiation factors initiation factor 1 initiation factor 3 and the smaller unit of the ribosome along with the uh, initiator, uh, initiator um, trna it formed the initiation complex the initiation uh, factor 2 gtp it is uh, used to bring the um, um, trna the initi initiator trna towards its p side of the ribosome now after then the when these factors they are released when the uh, larger subunit of ribosome it is attached at this side after binding of these two subunits the release uh, the initiation factors now they are released and this uh, in complex will enter into the elongation phase in case of prokaryotes a peptide bond is formed between these two amino acids and these two amino uh, this peptidyl transferase activity is due to the ribosomal rna 23s ribosomal rna activity of the larger subunit so in elongation phase the two um, types of the elongation factor that is the elongation factor tus and 2 2 gtp it is the elongation factor while the dust is the governing nucleotide exchange factor similarly in case of eukaryotes one alpha and elongation factor beta gamma they are involved now the in this case here in this phase or in this state the trna which contain the peptide um, it is at the a side and the trna which is empty it is present at the a uh, p side of the ribosome next the 
translocation translocation phase occur the uh, this ribosome then move ahead three nucleotides ahead that is move towards the next codon and this has been aided or assisted by different factors as in case of uh, uh, prokaryotes the elongation factor g gtp it is hydrolyzed to form the elongation factor g gtp and this translocation occur similarly in case of eukaryotes the um, elongation factor 2 gtp involves for this uh, translocation process after translocation now the e side it contain the empty uh, trna the a side uh, p side it contain the peptide trna which contain that which bind with the peptide and the a side it is empty for the incoming trna next the uh, growing of the polypeptide chain again and again by taking all of these steps and uh, um, this growing polypeptide chain now able to leave from the ribosomes when this ribosomes it will enter into the termination phase in the termination phase when there is the termination sequence that is uaa uag or uga when it achieve or it reach um, at in at the a site of the um ribosome then what happened the releasing factor instead of the trna the releasing factor now attached at these codons in case of prokaryotes the releasing factor 1 and releasing factor 2 they are involved to recognize the different codons like releasing factor 1 it recognize the uaa and uag while the releasing factor 2 it re recognize the uaa and uga codon when they um, attached at these releasing codons they are also uh, uh, now they stop the translational process and other releasing factor 3 it they release the polypeptide chain from their ribosomes and also the releasing other releasing factors this is the process that has been gone in the um, eukaryotes there is the growing polypeptide chain and this growing peptide chain at the end when the, there is a releasing uaa the um, um, stop codon when um, achieved then what happen the releasing only single releasing factor it will uh, uh, recognize all of these stop codons and another releasing factor 3 it will release this releasing factor and the now the separation of these two units and the polypeptide chain has been occur at the termination phase of the